Hello, VC. Hope everybody's doing well, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today's uh, collection video is kind of an important one for me, and I've been putting it off for some time now and been thinking about how I want to do this, and it's kind of hard because this guy, John Grant, that I'm talking about today is, is really, truly one of my biggest musical inspirations. I'm not a musician, I'm not a singer, I'm not a player of any instrument, but you know, sometimes music just strikes a chord and it hits you right where, you know, your heart is and it, it hits you, you know, in all the different emotions that uh, need to come out and you get inspiration through music. And John Grant's music has inspired me so many different times and through so many different ways that um, today's video is important to me. So I will hope I do a good job of going through uh, the music of John Grant. Um, as many of you may or may not know, John was in a band before he started a solo career, and uh, that band was happened happened to be based in Denver, which is where I grew up. I mean, I spent the better part of my life in Denver, and um, they were pretty big in the local music scene throughout the uh, mid to late 90s, early 2000s, and um, played a lot of local shows. And, um, you know, I really, really took a liking to this band and um, thought that they would be the next big thing, and it just never really happened uh, for them. But I'm talking about the band that John Grant uh, fronted uh, called The Czars. And um, I guess I'll start going through my music collection with uh, John Grant talking about the music of The Czars. Um, if you read about John, he's not particularly fond or has good memories or anything kind to say about the days with the band. Um, he's pretty much dismissed it as most of it not very good. Um, I think he's a little bit harsh on himself, um, like he is with many things. If you if you know who I'm talking about and you're familiar with John Grant, you'll know that he is, um, you know, maybe a little bit lack of lacking of confidence, um, especially in the beginning, and um, for whatever reason, probably more personal than anything. Uh, he just doesn't speak very highly of his time and his contribution and the work that he did with the Czars. But I partic I love it. I loved it growing up in Denver. <coughs> and <clears throat> I still listen to it a lot. Um, and I'll go through uh, their catalog with you. Most of this is... Well, I shouldn't say most of it. I'd say about half of it is probably impossible to find. Uh, and then the other half is fairly accessible. So I'll just get started. Uh, the Czars formed, I think, in 1994 in Denver. John Grant is not from Denver, but he moved to uh, Parker, Colorado, which is a suburb of Denver, um, sometime in the 90s, I believe. Uh, may may maybe even earlier than that, but he is from uh, Buchanan, Mi Michigan. Um, but, he, you know, he uh, grew his musical roots and whatnot in Denver. And I had the good fortune of seeing this band in their infancy. You know, I... I was young and I was going to music clubs and was part of the music scene at, at that time and, and just fell in love with this band. But um, in 1994, I do want to make sure that I get all the names right. Um, originally, the members of the Czars were, of course, John Grant, uh, lead vocalist and lyricist, uh, Chris Pearson, um, Jeff, uh, uh, this is a hard, 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 hard name for me, uh, Linsenmeyer, Linsenmeyer, J Jeff Linsenmeyer, Andy Monley, Roger Green, and uh, later on they had a violinist in the, in the group, uh, Elon, Ellen Palmer. Uh, so that, that were really the, the, form the bulk of the time the Czars were an, an entity and a band that was pretty much the lineup. But of course the real talent and for me um, the, uh, the genius behind them were, was John. Uh, in 1994, they had their debut, uh, well, I guess it actually took a couple years to put this out, but in 96, they had their, they re self-released their demo CD called Mood Swings, and this is really honestly pretty good for demos. Um, it's rough. A lot of the lyrics uh, are ad-libbed. John had a habit at that time to uh, not put lyrics on paper, and he would just kind of ad-lib things as he went along. His style changed a lot after that, you know, after the initial couple albums from the Czars. But here, if you followed the band locally, you kind of never heard the same song twice because he would change the lyrics all the time. 
Um, and, and, and there are some standout tracks on here in the effort of time. I'm not going to go through tracks on some of their early stuff because it probably isn't that relevant or important anymore, but this, I would assume, is pretty hard to find. This is a demo CD, and um, I would think there are probably very few copies of this floating around, but, you know, they sold them at shows. And, you know, like most local bands, they were just trying to get their name out there, so it was just, as I said, the very infancy of John's musical, and I'm going to call it legacy, because, you know, he has, for me, created quite a legacy. Uh, and, to, and, and the year later, they released the official versions of many of the same songs, a few new ones on this album, called the La, Bra, La Bray Tar Pits of Routine. Hard for me to say that one again. Um, this has many of the same songs on it. This was released in September of 1997. And this one is hard to find also. This, I believe, is, is probably something I just picked up at a concert. It's just really a CDR of the actual non-demo versions of the uh, same songs that were on Mood Swings but uh, and a few new ones that uh, they, they put to a CD a year later. So um, some great songs on here though and uh, again I, I won't go through them but um, later on I'll probably go through a few of my favorite songs of the Czars but in the early stages these, these were still a little bit rough uh, as most startup bands were um, but immediately I could relate to John and the way he sang. He has an amazing voice. I mean, just incredible, deep, rich, baritone type voice. And he sings with conviction. And of course, if you know him more recently from his solo career, which has been very successful, um, I could see the talent straight away. And I think many people in Denver could see the talent. It was just a matter of him getting discovered. And um, I thought it would be with the Czars because they were such a great band together. They played amazingly together. Uh, but it just didn't happen. So anyway, we'll go through the rest of their stuff here. Sometime in between 97 and um, 98, John had sent his songs, or someone from the band had sent songs to a new record label that uh, a Cocteau Twins bassist Simon Raymond uh, had formed in the UK, Bella Union. And John, being such a big fan of Cocteau Twins, like myself, that's, um, you know, kind of another interesting similarity between his life and my life, and there are many, um, that uh, is, it's just kind of almost I ironic, you know, being from Denver and having some, some of the same problems and issues growing up, and, you know, so many of the things I relate to and think of him as such an influence, but um, anyway, uh, initially Simon Raymond didn't really think that they were ready to be signed, and uh, he, they continued to send the new material to uh, Bella Union and to Simon, and eventually he did say, uh, although he liked it initially, it did take a little time apparently for him to sign the Czars to Bella Union, and to this day, John is still with them, so he's been probably one of the very first signed bands, or na uh, now solo artists, to Bella Union. And Simon Raymond helped with production and uh, did this album, their first, and really their first really, really good album, uh, Before But Longer. This one is easy to find still. You can buy it just about anywhere CDs are found that carry good stock. Amazon probably is your best bet. This is a really, really good album. And I would say this is a great place to start if you're looking to get into the czars if you like John Grant. Um, this had the single Val. Um, and that is, unfortunately, he doesn't play it still today, but um, it's one of my favorite songs he's ever recorded. And um, this is about also the time that he stopped the improvising and actually wrote actual lyrics, put it on paper, and stuck to the same song over and over. Like, you know, I think he finally realized that, you know, singing with conviction and, and doing it properly, you're not going to get that emotion, you're not going to get that attachment to songs if you're changing it every single time you play it. So I'm really glad that he took that turn. I'm sure he is too. Uh, this is a great album, and um, I, I highly recommend it. It did have the single Val on it, and this is a CD single of that um, track Val. Uh, it's just a lovely song, and it's so wonderful. And, and again, I've said it before in these collections videos, but these CD singles always have B-sides. And I love them because, you know, I had enough material at one time to uh, have a whole nother album of the Czars. And, um, you know, it's just wonderful because uh, this had the B-side for Emily, wherever I may find her. 
and uh, Strange, which I absolutely love both songs, but Strange, every time I hear that song, it's like, wow, the vocal performance in that song is so amazing. I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but that's a song. John, if you happen to be watching this, um, you ought to sing Strange sometimes because your vocal in that song is so powerful and so good that um, it just shouldn't be swept away and forgotten about. It's so good. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, they did release one more album kind of independently through, without um, Bella Union, uh, just a local type release, I think it was. And I love the title of this. It's I'm going to try to say it slow and right. X would rather listen to Y than suffer through a whole sea of Zs. I just love this little EP, and I love the title, and everything about it is just magical. So I'm so pleased to have a copy of this, and I would guess this might not be too easy to find. But this just had four tracks on it, the title track, which I just mentioned, One Single Thing, Second Runner Up, and You Don't Know What Love Is, which is another fantastic song. I think that may be a cover song, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but wonderful little EP. If you ever stumble across it, uh, pick it up because it's so good. But I'm going to show you something later on here in a minute that you probably could get your hands on without too much difficulty that you'll, you'll find some of these songs on. Okay, going back to the Bella Union uh, story, uh, Simon Raymond, I hope I'm saying that right. I, I can never remember if it's Simon Raymond or Simon Raymond. Um, but anyway, uh, you, you Cocteau Twins fans know who I'm talking about. He's the head of Bell, Belly Union, and, and it was the former bassist for Cocteau Twins. Um, they released um, what many people consider the Czar's best album. I don't, personally, but it is a very, very good album. Uh, I still haven't shown you my favorite album of theirs. And this is called um, The Ugly People vs. The Beautiful People. Um, really, really solid effort here. And they did have a mild hit off this album called Drug. And occasionally, John will play this song live still. He uh, must be particularly fond of this song because it, uh, he will still play this one from time to time, Drug. Um, but it also had the single side effect, which I love that. Every song on here, Lullaby 6000, it's just amazing. I wish another... I, again, I, I hope someday that John will have better opinions of some of this music and maybe dig it out uh, and, and start introducing it again to his now-growing audience that never heard these songs, probably, uh, because this is really, really a good album, and um, got a lot of good press. This was, um, you know, 8 out of 10 on Mojo, and, uh, you know, a lot of good reviews for this, so um, I think the press uh, has always been pretty kind to the Czars. He always seems to have gotten good critical response, and it's the commercial response in the beginning that just never seemed to happen. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, and I live in America, obviously, I'm an American, so it's even worse here. John's really relatively still unknown. Um, a couple, uh, I just one single I guess I have from this is Side Effect. I don't know how common this is or how hard to find, but again, it's the B-Sides, My Funny Valentine Slash Val, which is an extended version of that single I was showing you, Val, but it has an additional part of My Funny Valentine, which is, of course, a classic standard song and they just fit perfectly together. It's just brilliant that they uh, they um, combine those two things. And um, I Fall to Pieces, which is a cover song, obviously, from Patsy Cline. A lot of uh, AM radio, early country slash cheesy kind of uh, stuff is always found on B-sides. Uh, ABBA, uh, I think John is a big fan of ABBA, and uh, his musical taste is incredible. I follow him on Facebook, and um, I'm not going to say I consider John a friend, uh, but I do know him uh, indirectly, you know, just from seeing him so many times in concerts, and, um, you know, he's met me three times, and he probably doesn't remember now, but, you know, I've met him three times, I've had CDs signed from him, we've had conversation, um, we are friends on Facebook, um, but, you know, I think it's just more of that he may have a vague memory of me, um, just from being such a fan. Um, so, I, in a way, I do hope that you're watching this, John, and um, I may send you a link to this video. Hopefully, hopefully you will enjoy it. Um, okay, uh, they did uh, have one more album with uh, Bella Union as the Czars. Well, I want to show you this first here. A couple other small little things I have in my collection from the Czars. 
This is a this is a soundtrack. It's a little one of those little three inch CDs. This is a soundtrack to the film I'd Rather Be Gone. Haven't seen the film. Probably well out of print by now. Um, but this little three inch CD is a format that doesn't exist anymore. And um, I'm always a little scared to play it because I think it's going to get trapped in my player or something. But I've I did play it once. I recorded it, and it's on my iPod, so at least I can hear it. But um, I, I don't pull this out and just pop it in because it's like, well, gosh, is it going to come back out? Um, but anyway, yeah, this is just a, got different versions of Lullaby 6000 and Drug, and you know, it's just a cool little souvenir more than anything really. And I would guess that this is really probably very hard to come by. Um, so really tickled to have that. And I sent John a photo a couple years ago of some of the stuff that I've collected through the years. And he sent me a reply back saying that he'd forgotten about some of this stuff that, you know, he didn't even have barely any memory of it. Anyway, their final album is what I consider their best album, and that is Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> well, quite a title. I think they knew at that time it was Goodbye because shortly after this was released, all the members of the band kind of disintegrated. They left one by one, other than John. Did try to continue for a very short time. Uh, with the name the Czars, but I think he realized that the, the band was just not meant to be. Um, this is such a fantastic album, though. The title track and Goodbye, um, the intro and then the song and Paint the Moon and uh, Little Pink House and uh, I Am the Man. It's just a wonderful, wonderful album, and I highly recommend this album. And John, again, if you're watching, uh, you ought to play some of these songs because I did read somewhere that you are proud of this album and I'm glad to hear it because it is really, really good. And I hope that you still feel proud of the work that you did, not only with this album, but with the band, because um, for, for me, for the fans, for people who lived in Denver particularly, uh, it was very meaningful. You had some fantastic shows. Um, you were always fantastic, always very polite, and happy to sign things. Some of these CDs are signed by you. And... Um, you know, I'm just happy to have them, and I would never, never part with them. Um, the singles from that album, there were uh, this just one, I guess, officially, Paint the Moon. This is the CD single from Paint the Moon. Um, there should have been more, but the B-sides on this one are Angel Eyes, which is a cover of an ABBA song, and Where the Boys Are, which I believe is, uh, is it Patsy Cline or Connie Francis? I don't know. Uh, but your version of it is better than the original, in my opinion. Um, so, I, I, I just love these, uh, I love these B-sides, I, I just think they're so wonderful. And, um, you do get a little bit of, um, a collection that I guess probably contractually they, they must have had one more album on contract that they needed to do. Not 100% sure of that, but, um, they did release, uh, a covers album, other than one song I think is not a cover. I, Sorry I Made You Cry is the name of their final album, mostly covers on this one, if not all covers. And um, this was a collection uh, of some of those B-sides that I have on CD single, or um, X would rather listen to Y than suffer through a whole sea of Zs and, and stuff that was harder to find. Um, I think the only original song on here is Black is the Color. Everything else is a cover. Angel Eyes, Where the Boys Are, My Funny Valentine, For Emily, um, I Fall to Pieces, and um, this song needs to be heard. Your version of this song, John, uh, that was on this compilation, at least you can dial with a smile on your face, uh, the Tim Buckley song, Song to the Siren, is the single best version of this song I have ever heard. Um, it is remarkable, uh, every bit, if not better, than the original. I know this song has been covered by so many people. It's one of the most beloved songs of all time, the Tim Buckley song, and it is a beautiful song. But I have never heard a version better than the Czar's version of that. Um, and there used to be a YouTube video for it, and it's gotten banned for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, there's really nothing adult about it, in my opinion. But uh, it got banned, and I do see it from time to time coming back on YouTube. But... If I can find it, I'll put a link to it, because it is a beautiful, beautiful song. Okay, um, a couple other things I'll just show briefly about the Czars. Uh, I've got a couple just little souvenir postcards here that I got when I purchased the album Goodbye, and just a sticker from the Czars. 
And I have this, and I really honestly don't remember where I bought this. I think it may have been at one of the shows, or maybe it was a mail order. I have no idea where I got this. The Czar's DVD. This is um, very rough uh, performance footage of you and uh, of the band in, in Denver. And um, it just looks like it was just a homemade job, really. Um, but I don't know if this is impossible to find, or how many copies exist, or... If it's not as rare as I think it is, but this is, you know, I almost forgot that I had it. Um, but it has interviews from South by Southwest in 2000, um, and, and, and performances either locally or probably in Austin at South by Southwest. So, so happy to have that, and unfortunately the quality isn't great on it, but um, I still enjoy playing it from time to time to see and hear and reminisce about those early days in Denver. A couple other small things I'll show you is um, uh, I, I did, did pick up when I lived in Denver some, uh, as far as I know, I don't know anything about the rest of the band, where they are today, what they did after the Czars, nothing. But I do have, this is Roger Green's solo album. There may be more, I don't know. So if anybody knows anything more about Roger Green or Andy Monley or Chris Pearson or Jeff Linsenmeyer, <laughs> Uh, let me know, because I would be curious to know what happened to these guys. This is a solo album, if I can read the title. Uh, what would this be for? And It's been so long since I heard it, I really can't comment on it, but I'll have to put it on and see what I think of that. And then Andy, Andy Munley had a solo album called... Uh, it is called Denver. And I have a copy of that. And again, it's been very, very long time since I've played this, so I really don't know <laughs> what to expect, but... Um, uh, probably long out of print on that and again if anybody knows anything about what happened to those guys um, again John if you're watching I'd be curious to know what happened to them uh, just out of just just pure nostalgic and curiosity okay so uh, after a period of time fading out of the music scene John resurfaced thanks to the good folks in Denton Texas uh, kind of an American indie folk rock outfit called Midlake Midlake invited John, they were fans of the Czars, they were fans of John's voice and his, his lyrics and his songs, just like me, and they invited, who I think John was living in New York at the time, and said, we want you to come to Texas, we want you to, to help you make an album, we we're going to be your band, we are going to give you uh, all the equipment you need, we will help you record it, we will help you um, put it out. And um, the, the good folks, Midlake from Denton, Texas, which is only about three hours north of where I live here in Austin, uh, invited John, and, you know, he was kind of reluctant at first. He's in saying, you know, who, who does this? You know, nobody does this. There's, there must be a catch. Um, but he did, you know, do it, and he released his first uh, solo album. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, before I talk about that, I, I'm, I wish I could edit because I, I did go out of turn a little bit. Uh, the album Sorry I Made You Cry from the Czars has been released on vinyl. It's a color vinyl. I want to show you that because it is pretty. Um, it's probably not available anymore, I would guess. This was from the Bella Union website, and it's probably limited, so there probably isn't copies of this anymore, but the CD is easy to find. Uh, but the I'm Sorry I Made You Cry was released on vinyl many years later after the fact, and I'm so happy to have a copy of that. And then finally, I did mention a new way to get reintroduced to the Czars, if you want to know more about John's music, is they, just this year, they released this, uh, The Best of the Czars, on two LPs. It's very affordable. It's only $20 in the U.S., so everybody, go get a copy of this and get to know the wonderful band, the Czars. Um, I hope you supported this, John. I hope that you and Simon collectively picked these songs and... Um, said, yeah, I want to do this. I want these songs to go out again. I don't know. Um, but um, it's uh, two LPs. It really is the best of the czars. And it's just a wonderful way to get in introduced to more music from John Grant. So look for that in record stores or online. It's very, very affordable. It just came out this past year. So anyway, the wonderful Midlake uh, invited John to come. He was very reluctant. He finally did it and said, yeah, I want that's something I want to do and um, took some time and, and, and released what I consider to be um, one of the greatest albums ever. Uh, I mean, it really is. I, I'm not afraid to say it because this album is so good. 
Uh, it's called The Queen of Denmark, and I think John would probably agree with me that most of the songs on here came out exactly like he hoped that they would, especially the title track. Um, probably for the first time in his life, he actually put out an album that turned out exactly how he hoped it would. Um, and, you know, probably he may have faded into to obscurity, he may have never had a second chance, he may have never had an opportunity to start a solo career had it not been for Midlake. So, fans of Midlake, um, you're going to like that album because it has a lot of influence from Midlake on it. It has a very similar sound to it, but it's a very personal album from John Grant. And I'm really going long on time here, but I don't want to dismiss his solo career because he took a different turn again on the second album. First of all, that was a very critically acclaimed album. Uh, I think it was Mojo gave it an 8 out of 10. Made a lot of top 10 lists when it came out in... Uh, night, uh, let's see, that came out in uh, 2010. And three years later, he released this album, Pale Grain Ghosts. And this album also gave him a tremendous amount of exposure and critical acclaim. Award nominations. There was a Brit Award nomination for Best Male Vocalist. There were... Uh, all kinds of awards. This was named Album of the Year um, by, gosh, who was it? Uh, maybe it was Rough Trade. I think it was Rough Trade's Album of the Year in 2013. And um, just an amazing, amazing album. It has so many wonderful songs on it. And um, the, the cool thing about this album is it's, such a, it, it, it's just such a stark contrast to The Queen of Denmark that you'd almost, other than the vocals, and some songs, um, but you know, you'd almost forget, in a way, that it's the same artist because it's just absolutely different than the first one. Uh, this is the pale green color vi vinyl version direct from Bella Union. Very happy to have that. I think there's also a white vinyl version and, of course, the black. Um, so I'm, I'm just really happy that I was uh, able to jump on the, uh, the green one because, obviously, this is an important artist for me. Um, and the, the, the thing about John's solo work is it, it lyrically is so much stronger than the work that he did with the Czars. And I think that he's finally gained that confidence and that ability to express himself exactly the way he wants to, not only with the lyrics but in music, and he's having more fun, and it shows in the work. There's a song on here called GMF, and it's greatest mother, you know, you know what. <laughs> it's, it's just funny and... It's just such a cool song. There's some really great dance music on here, too. Um, the, the title track, Pale Green Ghost, and the, and the song Black Belt are amazing, and they, they really shake the rafters when you hear it uh, on vinyl. And he uh, uh, worked with uh, Biggie Vieira, Biggie Vera, Biggie Vieira, I'm not sure, sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, from Gus Gus who was kind of an electronic pioneer, similar to styles of craft work and uh, some of the electronic uh, gadgetry uh, of the 80s and 90s. Um, uh, but Biggie had a big influence on, on this album, so just a wonderful album, and I can't say strongly enough, go get that album. Uh, a couple special things that I have on vinyl is I have uh, John Grant Get Schooled, this was a very limited release. I don't know how many copies. I think only 500 or less exist of this. This is just um, uh, tracks that he did as a duet of the album, Pale Green Ghost. He sings with Sinead Connor. He sings with Beth Orton. He sings um, with Connor O'Brien. And it's uh, duets, uh, versions of the tra some of the, uh, let's see, five of the tracks that are on Pale Green Ghost. So really, really special to have that probably hard to find, and I also have this uh, the second time he did the Strong Room. He did a Strong Room session for um, Queen of Denmark, and he did another Strong Room session for Pale Green Ghost, and these are more acoustic, stripped-down versions of the same tracks that are on, uh, on um, Pale Green Ghost, so again, this is very limited and hard to find. I think this is just black vinyl, though. Uh, just take a peek, yeah, just black vinyl on that, so really, really pleased to have that as an American especially because these are never released in this country and then finally um, you know I, I do have CD copies of uh, Pale Green Ghost or uh, uh, Queen of Denmark and Pale Green Ghost this one is signed and uh, you know I, I consider signatures personal when I actually meet him and have him signed and it's, it's signed directly to me I'm not going to show you that but it's signed <laughs> um, so 
Yeah. And then uh, finally, just this past record store day, he released this album here live with the um, uh, BBC Philharmonic in concert. Uh, kind of a uh, it, it, it's a compilation of both um, solo albums live with the BBC Philharmonic. And really, really amazing to hear these songs with a full orchestra. It's just uh, incredible. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he does do the song Drug from the Czars on, on that. So I was very happy to see that. And as a bonus, if it wasn't cool enough to have that as a Record Store Day release, it is on a beautiful silver vinyl, 2LP set on silver vinyl. This was not released in the U.S. for Record Store Day. It's a European thing only. So I did have to order this online, and I did it, you know, I waited, you know, because with Record Store Day, as you guys know, if you if you buy uh, items that you can't find in your local markets, you're going to pay too much for them. So the best thing to do with Record Store Day is wait a few weeks, wait a couple months, and then um, see what the real prices are going for. And I paid about twice as much as it sells for. Uh, on record store day, this is probably about uh, twenty six dollars. So I paid about twice as much as that, which is too much. But it's one of my favorite artists, and it was worth it to me. So that's all I can say about that. And in the meantime, I had the CD, and was enjoying it on CD. So just I I, I had to have it. You know, it's just one of those things. Okay, well, I wanted this to be twenty minutes. I've gone thirty one. All I can say is, uh, guys, please check out John Grant. It's such an amazing singer, such an amazing songwriter. Um, his albums are funny and uh, they'll bring a tear to your eye and they're important. So uh, I hope that I've inspired you to check out his music and uh, thank you so much for watching. Vacation's going really well. I feel relaxed and having fun, listening to a lot of music, going out rec record shopping and enduring the horrible heat here in Texas. It's just a terrible 100 plus degrees every day so far this week anyway thank you again so much for watching take care of yourselves and we'll see you real soon bye for now